Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to talk about um, another one of the furniture, the mini courses that I have for furniture flippers. Um, Today it's all about prep work and workspace. So this one is uh, definitely for somebody that is just starting out. Um, if you're flipping furniture for your home or you're flipping for, you want to start selling it as a side hustle, a full-time gig, um, whatever it is that you're looking for. So, um, this is one of the topics when I started coming up with these, uh, mini courses and, uh, the full course that I have, I really, you know, I really paid attention to and really honed in on the questions that I got asked about the most. So I knew those were the things that I really wanted to make sure were included and fully <laughs> like gone over and discussed inside the course. And so inside this mini course, it's like I said, it's all about prep work and workspace. And so um, one of the biggest questions that I always get asked is, I don't have I don't have the space to start this. I really want to do it. Um, maybe I've, you know, I've, I've painted a piece for a home. I really know I could make money doing this, but I don't have, you know, I don't have a workshop. I don't have a garage. I don't have a, you know, I'm, I'm an extra shed to work out of. Guess what? I don't either. And for 20 years, I've never had a, you know, quote unquote, workshop to do this furniture flipping. Um, a lot of the flippers I know do not have a heated and cooled workspace space that's just full of, you know, supplies. And no, most of the people that um, are doing this, they're doing it in the space that they have um, and they make it work. And so when I tell you that I have flipped furniture <laughs> I've done it in my office, and now people will say, I don't have an office, that's okay. I've done it in my living room during nap time when the kids were napping, because that's where I could hear them the best. I've done it in our dining room. We have um, we have a smaller home, so I have like, um, we have like a bathroom laundry room where our heater, you know, like our furnace and like all the mechanicals are in our house. It is kind of like a, also a storage little area. I I just, when I'm saying that, it sounds like it's a huge area. I, it is not at all, (laughs) not at all. Like I have a little space between where the washer is and the deep freezer that we have, um, just enough space to like slide in a dresser and work in there. Um, it's horrible lighting back there, but I have definitely worked there many, many times. We live in Iowa, so I am not able to work out in our garage. We do have a garage. I am not able to work out in the garage, though, um, all year round. Um, It's not heated. It's not insulated. um, There's no air conditioning. There's a couple of two small windows to get air in there. But So it's definitely not a space. It's not a workshop or anything like that. We have two cars that go in there and um, and a little bit of extra space, and that's pretty much it. So When I say that you don't need a whole workshop, um, you literally can flip furniture with whatever space you have. So um, if your kitchen's big enough, do it in there. If you've got a dining room, you know, and like I said, an office, a living room, like I said, that storage room that we have downstairs that is, has horrible lighting and not a lot of space, that's where I do it as well. So um, there are many possibilities. If you work in an area that's got, um, you know, great weather all year round, uh, you uh, can work outside. It That's amazing. So you, you don't have to have, you know, this massive and professional setup to be flipping furniture, even like full-time flipping furniture. You know, even if you are making a lot of money flipping furniture, you still don't have to have, I mean, if you want to, great, but I'm just saying you can continue to do this without having a you know, a huge expensive workshop to do it in. So inside this course, um, this mini course, you will learn how to pick out paint colors and different brands of paint colors. So again, I kind of added this inside this mini course because it's a question I get a lot from people that are just starting out. 
um, they are consuming information online or whatever, and they're seeing a lot of different paint colors and different paint brands, and they are so overwhelmed, they don't know where to start. So inside this course, I, I definitely tell you there's a way to start. There's a way you should do this. Um, don't do it like I did it. <laughs> I mean, paint brands have come a long way for furniture flippers, a long way. When I started, I was using leftover wall paint that we had in our first home. Um, that's how I was flipping furniture. So there's definitely ways to figure out the best colors and the best brands. And I talk about that all inside this, this mini course. I also share the supplies that you need. Um, you know, I'm somebody that I, I don't... Um, I don't wanna invest in a lot of things that I'm not gonna use, right? And so I have always been somebody that's been like, okay, well, I'm gonna see if I can use what I've got. Can I make that work, right? Before I'm out spending money on things. That has been, it still is my, um, you know, if there's a project I want to, you know, an idea comes to me and I will talk it over with Matt and my first go-to is what scraps do we have left over to make this work? Let's use whatever scraps we can first. And then if we have to buy something else, you know, then we can go from there. But um, so I, I talk about uh, what supplies you need to get started. And you don't need 500,000 things to get started um, at all. Please don't let somebody tell you that you do. Um, I talk about where to get supplies. Um, so definitely, you know, I want you to start out with what you need because there are certain here here's here's another like um there are certain supplies you have to do because there are certain steps that you cannot skip when you are flipping furniture. Again, I have learned this the hard way and it's simple steps like cleaning the piece of furniture, right? Um so there there's just certain steps that you do definitely have to do with every piece of furniture you're flipping and so making sure that you have those right supplies to do each step properly is is where um this course is going to take you. Um and then where to get those supplies and then also setting up your workspace wherever that is. It doesn't have to be a fancy workshop. Um, but it is nice, like when I work in certain areas in my home, there are things that I do to set up my workspace to make it seamless, right? To make the entire project not chaotic, not stressful, me running all over the place trying to find supplies. Um, there's, there's some things that you should do to set up your workspace no matter where that is um, and so that the project goes a lot smoother. So again, we are giving um, a coupon code to all the podcast listeners for all of these mini courses that I have been talking about. So make sure and check the show notes for that coupon code. If you know somebody that would benefit from this or who wants to start flipping furniture, um, you know, has questions about paint colors, brands, the supplies they need, worried about a workspace, um, please share this podcast with them because I would love to help them. My goal is to get in front of as many furniture flippers as I can on on any part of their journey. So if you're wanting to start, grow, or scale your business, um, I want to I want to help you. So um, definitely share this podcast with somebody that could use it. And until next time, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you very soon. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. I love having creative chit chats with you. And my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here. And I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.